Now, we'll be talking about uh, wars of extermination today. Now, God has sent uh, his children out to uh, do great and mighty things that some people weren't too happy about. And, you know, some of the scriptures we've been studying and reading there, we don't always understand them at first. They seem a little odd. And, uh, but God knows what he's doing all the time. He has a, a rhyme and a reason for everything that he, everything that he does. Don't always understand it. May not always agree with it. May not always like it. But God has a reason for doing what He does. We just have to learn to accept it and, uh, and roll with it, so to speak. Uh, stay faithful to His Word. <clears throat> Somebody like to read the key verse uh, today? Ephesians six and twelve. Okay. okay. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. Right. We're getting to that look at that difficult passage of Scripture where God told the Israelites to completely destroy nations that occupied the land that He had promised to us. Sometimes the Lord gives us things on a silver platter, so to speak, and we don't have to do anything at all. He just gives it to us. Sometimes, a lot of times, what he offers to give us, we have to work for it. Which is good because if God just gives us everything on a separate platter, never had to lift a finger to get anything, we'd all be spoiled rotten rats. It's like kids. Kids, yeah, that's right. So, so sometimes he makes us work for what he's willing to give us. And there's an example today, they had to work, they had to fight for the land, but the Lord gave it to them, gave them victory, but they had to fight for it. He didn't just give it to them. He promised it to them, but they had to, uh, they had to fight for it. God always, God always has a reason for doing what he does. Uh, anybody know what it means by uh, probably the military rules of engagement? Yep. You're familiar with that? Uh, so Very that. much so. Yeah. Um, the way it was when I was in the military on there, um, we stood firm on where we were at, the land that we were at, to protect the property that was in the interest of the United States. And if we had to engage as far as defending it, or you know, being, we had to wait till we were fired upon before we could actually defend ourselves. And it changed a little bit under President Trump, but I think it's been reversed again on uh, the current administration. Yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> yeah the rules are dangerous. Just like a set of rules and regulations on how you when and how you're supposed to use a brute force, so to speak, to accomplish the goal that we have set forth uh, to accomplish. And sometimes God has different uh, God has different uh, rules of engagement than what we uh, are used to today. An example is the lesson today: you know, rules of engagement where you go in there and you just wipe them out. There's no waiting, no uh, no peace treaty. You just go in there and do what I told you to do. Go in there and just get rid of everybody and everything, uh, clean the land, and claim the land uh, for your own. So that's what he did. It uh, seems uh, harsh at times when we're talking about today about some of the things they had to do, but as we study more, we'll find out why God told them to do it, why he was told to, why they were told to go in and just wipe it clean and to get rid of it. It seems almost contradictive because we talk about in the New Testament about loving your enemies. Be kind to those who use you and abuse you, pray for them, and uh, to love everybody. Love your neighbor as yourself. I, I got to go one more thing on there. As far as I know, even for uh, uh, the way countries defend themselves or making a precision attack, you know, the United States, Israel, um, England, France, um, those countries right there, they actually do precision attacks and try to do it without civilian casualties. And they even go so far as sometimes announce, hey, look, clear your people out because we're getting ready to attack. And we're basically one of the only few countries that actually do that where some of the terrorists right now, they like to uh, hide in places where they're shielded by innocence. Yeah. 
places, the, uh, the statues, and the other destroy all the people that were there to get rid of them. And we don't always understand why the Lord would not save some as they did at times. And, you know, we, the Bible makes it clear that the Lord knows our heart. The Lord knows our mind. Now, if you think of people that are so uh, hard-hearted and hard-headed that there's no way they'll ever turn to the Lord. They're going to always be, from the time they're born and to the time they're die, they're going to be against the Lord. Yeah. There's no chance of salvation. Then, yeah. I saw a, a good uh, video yesterday, and it talked about like this, this period of time where people were worshiping graven images and gold and you know, handmade idols and stuff, and where today we're more sophisticated and we don't turn around and bow down to such foolishness um, like they do now, but we have a nasty habit of uh, putting uh, maybe a TV program over something, or we worship uh, the, the actors that are in there, we make a big fuss over uh, um, because uh, they did this screenplay on there and it, and it was fantastic on there. We have a tendency to worship these people or the football player, you know, we're, we're watching them, they turn around and they do something spectacular. We have a habit of, we've actually traded the um, objects that don't breathe to objects that do breathe and we have a tendency to put that before God and that makes it, a, anything we put before God makes it an idol. And needs to be done away. I mean, it's okay to watch sports, but they're just yeah. people. You'd be proud of people are you know, happy with them, but not uh, not put them on the lower up for sure. Uh, okay. Let me just kind of quick here. Uh, you know, the Lord's going to give them the land, they got to go in there and work for it. And they tell them not to, not to marry with them because they'll, uh, as Tommy said earlier, that you know sometimes a person can get involved and. In a relationship, and even though they're right to God and serving to God, that person they're getting involved with is pulling them away from the Lord. And so they've got to go back to heaven because he knew what was going to happen. They go in there, and the men go in there, and they marry the women. The women go in there, and they marry the men. And they get influenced by the spouse. And they get pulled away from the Lord very easily. It's so like people in the world uh, today, they get influenced by the world around us and get, get pulled away from the Lord. So we uh, stand fast and study the Word and uh, come to church, be influenced by each other, uh, uh, stone, uh, you know, got to sharpen each other up and influence each other and encourage each other and lift each other up. You know, we don't uh, fall by the wayside ourselves. And get rid of, it's kind of like when the <clears throat> uh, Lord flooded the earth a door time. He tried to wipe out all the evil that was there. And he's telling us we'll do the same thing, going into all the evil Everything that represents evil in this place, you go in and you wipe it down, you burn it down, you get rid of it, you smash it, you, you bury it, you do whatever, you get rid of it. So it doesn't influence you to go out and do the things that you shouldn't be doing, that you'll follow me and you'll follow me alone. I want you to be different from everybody else. So that was the plan. And he did it. Well, they did it. Uh, but there's uh, problems along the way, of course. The... Some of these people were, turn, somebody turn to uh, nine, chapter 9, Deuteronomy chapter 9. This is one of the reasons what the uh, Lord told Israel to go in there to annihilate these people because of the way they were living, the way they believe, and the way they always have been, the way they always would have been, <clears throat> had the Lord God changed things. He wanted Israel to understand that uh, he was doing this. <clears throat> Not, excuse me, not because Israel was so good, because they weren't. They're only good because God is good. It's like us today. You look at somebody in the preacher and you say, oh man, he's great, he's fine, he's you know, a good, godly man, and, and that may be so, but it's only because God in them that makes them who they are. Right. It's not our righteousness, it's not their righteousness, it's God's righteousness that makes them who they are. In 9, chapter 4 and 5, the Lord is telling them that don't be proud. Speak not thou in thine heart. 
after the Lord thy God has cast them out before thee, saying, For my righteousness the Lord hath brought me in to possess this land. But for the wickedness of these nations the Lord doth drive them out from before thee. Not for thy righteousness, or for the uprightness of thine heart, doest thou go to possess their land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out before thee, and that he may perform the word which the Lord swear to the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob. Sometimes, like in the world today, the Lord blesses folks. And some people think because, you know, I'm such a good person, you know, because I, I do this, I do that, I say this, I say that, I'm so holy, I'm so righteous, I'm so great that the Lord has blessed me mightily. And it's not only because of who we are and what we do, it's because what Jesus is doing is why we're blessed. Because we're not nowhere near what Jesus was or what Jesus is. We strive to be and we get better and better as we grow and grow. We get more and more like Him to the best of our ability. And it's not our righteousness that God loves. It's uh, the righteousness of Christ that we uh, inherit and become a part of. There were some wicked folks. Uh, the things they were doing, they, uh, these group of people, uh, they had reached an, an unimaginable level of evil in their daily life. Moral and spiritual, uh, spiritual corruption. They had idols like Michael was talking about. They would even take their own children when they were born, and they didn't abort them like they do today while they're still in the womb. They were born, and then they would cast them into the fire, put them on the altar, and burn them up, yep. sacrifice them to the God that they were worshiping. They had a great deal of pagan gods. They they believed in practice a man with a man, a woman with a woman, and that's kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, not only that, they would also, a man would lay down with an animal, or a woman would lay down with an animal. They would just, uh, and I mean, that, that's, that's not all they were doing, they were doing more than that. Uh, but it, it was a very wicked people, and they believed with all their heart, all their mind, that that's the way they lived, that's what they believed in. They always have done it, they always going to do it, and they care what nobody else thought, what nobody else said. That's the way they lived, and that's the way they were. And nothing was going to change their mind. And God knew that. And some of the people in the world today, they're hard heart and hard head. They believe what they believe, and they're going to do the same thing and believe the same thing and live the same thing until the day they die. There's no hope for it. There's no hope for these people here. So God told them to go in and just get rid of them. You can't save you. You can't change their mind. You can't change their heart. They are what they are, so we're going to do what we're going to do. We're going to go in and we're going to wipe them out and get rid of the evil. And you're going to take the land that they built and they developed. They started, they worked hard, and they developed the land. You're going to go in there and you're going to take it over. I'm going to give it to you. But you got to work for it. It's like we go to work every day uh, to earn a, earn a check. The Lord gives us that ability to do it. We have to go in and we have to earn it. And they got to go in and they have to earn this. God gave them the land. They had to go in and earn it. God's got a, a mighty arm of deliverance. It's a blessing from the Lord. Sometimes it doesn't seem that way because of the things we have to do to accomplish the things that God has taught us to do. But God loves us. He looks out for us. He provides for us. And like Brother Thomas said this morning, no matter what comes our way, what goes on in the world around us, put our faith, put our trust in the Lord. He will walk us through no matter what we have to go through. Be it sickness, disease, financial problems, social problems with our family or whatever it may be, domestic problems, the Lord is there by our side. He will deliver us out of the hand of the enemy. Also in 16 it says, And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eyes shall have no pity upon them, neither shall thou serve their gods, for that would be a snare unto thee. And then also in Deuteronomy 20, 19. says, But of the cities of these people which the Lord thy God will give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breathes. Thou shalt save alive nothing that breathes. Man and animal. Get rid of all of them. 
But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. That they teach you not a do, that they teach you not to do after all their abominations, which they have done unto their gods. So should ye sin against the Lord your God. When thou shalt besiege a city a long time and make war against it, or to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof that by forcing an axe forcing an axe against them. For thou mayest eat of them, and thou shalt not cut down them before the tree of the field is man's life, to employ them in the seeds. We talk about cutting down the trees, the fruit trees that you can eat off of, the nuts, the fruits, because that's they I sent them in there and they let them, I let them develop the land and now you're reaping the benefits of them growing and producing all they produce. Don't cut your own feet off, so to speak. Cut down the groves and other things, not the, uh, not the life that gives you life. And then in 21 it says, Somebody uh, turn to Deuteronomy 25. Comes flying by here this morning. Right, 25, somebody read 17 through 19. You're only 25, 17 through 19. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when you were come forth out of Egypt. How you met thee by the way and smote the hindmost of the even all that were feeble behind thee, but thou was faint and weary, and he feared not God. Therefore it shall be, when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies round about, and the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, thou shalt not forget it. Had been, they were coming out of Egypt. The Amalekites had way back in the, I'm going to use my own words here, but they had like hid out in the bushes and the weeds and waited for the, the main people to get through. And then the older people, the weak people, the weak people, the salt, the sick people that were dragging behind. The Amalekites came and ambushed them and wiped them out. Uh, they didn't go up in front and, and fight the men. They hid back and waited for all the strong warriors that passed through and picked on the weak and the sick and the back of them. And now they, and that's what he's talking about here, to uh, you know, what they did, they were uh, wicked folk. They uh, had tried to hamper what God had called his people to do. It was all part of the devil's plan, just like in the world today. All the things that we have, the temptations, the trials, the tests, the influence that go on in this world today, the devil was trying to drive us, and especially our children who don't know any better, away from the Lord. To try to keep somebody from coming to church. To try to keep somebody from reading the Bible. There was a time where, like, we have Wednesday night Bible studies. But at one time, I don't know if they still do or not, but at one time, most of the, the clubs around, uh, Wednesday night was ladies' nights. Uh, don't go to church, come to the club, you get in for free. And uh, trying to influence people to do something else rather than come to Bible study. Rather than come to church, they got stuff going on on Sunday all the time. Uh, and on Wednesday and all the other times, try to keep people from coming to church to learn, to study the Word, to be influenced by what we hear, to be influenced by each other. Trying their best, the magazines, the movies, the programs, the, all the stuff, the, the courses in college. Uh, Y'all probably seen the movie uh, God's Not Dead and God's Not Dead Too, where people in the world they are trying to influence people to not, to not believe that Jesus is who he says he was, that he is. Not to believe in God, to pull us away, to pull people away from the uh, walking with the Lord. Because uh, you've heard the expression, misery loves company. Well, the devil's the same way. He, he's miserable. He knows where he's going. knows where he came from. He's going to try, try to take as many people with him as he can. So he does all that he can, uh, the power that he has in this world, to influence people not to follow the Lord. Uh, so not to come to Sunday school anymore to do what we're doing, to learn, to study, to influence each other and encourage each other and be influenced by the Word, by the Word. He uh, wants to uh, keep us down. So he, 
whispers in your ear, tells you bad things about yourself, and brings up your sins of your of your past, and try to keep you try to keep you down. You probably heard that song by Lauren Daigle about the voices she hears, trying to tell her she's not good enough, she ain't gonna make it. And the Lord does that to people all, all the time. And the, uh, the devil does that to people today. He tries to keep people down to keep people from rising up in the Lord. But as we know that we're a child of God, we're an ambassador of Christ. And when God loves us, He provides for us, He'll take care of us, He'll give us all that we need to make it through this daily walk in life. And we just sort of believe and trust Him. He, uh, he loves us dearly more than we know. More than a lot of people know anyway. Somebody read 1 Samuel 15, 1 through 3. 1 Samuel 15, 1 through 3. Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord said to anoint you king over his people Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites Am 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 for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came from Egypt. Now go attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death women and men and women, children and infants, cattle, sheep, camels, and all. Everything you're breathing, get rid of. It. Because God knew their heart, He knew their minds, and there was no uh, chance of them changing from who they were. Uh, so He had to uh, cleanse the. Uh, had to clean out the closet, so to speak, and get rid of all the junk. Got to clean out the neighborhood and get rid of those. And the Lord, you know, the Lord tells them there's a, a time and place for everything under the sun, and now is the time for them to go out and take care of uh, Amalek uh, to get rid of them. Because there was no, uh, no, no hope then whatsoever at all. Every little hint, residue, smell, or scent of evil had to be dealt with. So God dealt with it. It seems harsh, but uh, God knows what He's doing. You know, he does it all because He loves us. So. Yeah, but those Amalekites people were mean. Yeah, they were wicked. <clears throat> they want to go out and face the men. They want to go out and uh, you know, elderly and the sick, and the women and the children, and people on the weak, and yeah, everybody couldn't says, defend themselves. It says in my Bible that they were guerrilla terrorists, and they lived by attacking other nations carrying off their wealth and their families. Yeah, some, uh, trying to gain, uh, gain power. Yeah, uh, let's turn to Numbers, chapter 31. Yeah, Numbers, chapter 31, and somebody read 1 through 1 and 2. Volunteers, Judges chapter 31, I mean Numbers chapter 31, verse 1 and 2. And the Lord said unto Moses, saying, Avenge the children of Israel, and the Mennonites, that there shalt thou be gathered unto thy people. Because we're going to take care of them, they know they'll be gathered together and become a you know, mighty people to what they are at the time. And also in uh, verse 7. And they warred against the Midianites, and the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses, and they slew all the males, and they saved the females. Now it seems awesome times that the Lord's come to go in and get rid of everybody, man, woman, child, animal, and here's telling them just to do the males, not to do the females. And there's a lot more to that that we, uh, and goes in and says, and the children of Israel took all the women of the Midianites captives, and the little ones. Took the spoil of their cattle, the bells ringing all red. Wow. 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 And the flocks of their gods. And he uh, saved the females, and those are not them with a man. Well, they weren't were following God's instructions when he saved the females. And, uh, the wilderness wanderings for the 40 years is because the generation of people that come out of there, all of them over 20 years of age, I believe it is died out except two people. 
And that's Joshua and Caleb. Yep, they believe. And the reason is because they followed that. Caleb being an old man. So when he went into the promised land, he selected one of the worst areas of work, the giants and all that kind of stuff, and God led him and helped him defeat them in order to take possession of them. And that's a prime example of us today. We need to do what God says and live like he says, and then we don't have to worry about what's, what's coming ahead of us. He'll take care of us. Yeah, they, uh yeah, you gotta have that faith and trust in God no matter what. It's uh, it's uh, it'll be all right. Well, I'm not gonna give the lesson today. I can tell you. Uh, skip me here to uh, the last one. Uh, Romans chapter 12, 17 and 19. That was the New Testament. Romans chapter 12. 17 and 19. This is where the, uh, chapter 12. It says, Recompense to no man evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it, is po if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peacefully with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. You know, the bishop tells us to love our enemies that if any justice needs to be done, any vengeance needs to be done, God will take care of it. We don't have to worry about it. But, uh, we just do exactly like Brother Thomas says, no matter what, do what the Lord tells us to do, and the Lord will take care of everything else. And then in the Ephesians, Chapter 6. Chapter 6, 11 through 13. It says, like Mr. Ellen was talking about the other day when I was talking about the tithe. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because he has plenty of them out there for us. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in, in the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Now, back then, the God's chosen people had to go out, and they had to man-to-man -to -man combat. They had to literally destroy the enemy physically because of what they, who they were and what they represented. Now, ours today, we don't have to go out as a child of God and destroy somebody physically. But there's people out there right now who are going to try to influence us with evil to get us to do evil. So what we battle is not physical battle, but it's a mental battle. It's an emotional battle. It's a spiritual battle. And we have to go out and have to be strong with the whole armor of God in our life so that we'll go out and all the things that are out there try to influence us to turn away from what's in this book turn away from what we know is right and what we know God has called us to do to be strong enough to say no I'm not going to do that, what you're doing is wrong what I'm doing is right to be an influence, to be so grounded and deep rooted in his word that we know we don't have to look it up on every little thing that we go through that we just know it in our head and in our heart what is right and what is wrong by God's word and we live it out like the time said to live out the word of God that we learn on how to live as God wants us to do now, I talked to you before about uh, how a lot of people were having controversy about coming to church in a suit and tie or coming to church in a pair of blue jeans and a t-shirt. And the, as I told you about the tie, it, a long time ago, it was, uh, I brought a picture, didn't get time to go through it, but it, it started from this. This is a soldier. He was a warrior. And that tie that he's wearing was part of his uniform. And now, it, Somebody seen that, uh, somebody in France, they said, oh man, that looks good, I like that. So they started making part of their, their regular dress wardrobe. And then they got, it went from there, and it came over to America, I think in the 1900s. The tie came from over there to over here. And now most people wear it today as part of a, a fashion accessory. It looks good, because it looks good on soldiers. But originally, 
It was a uh, part of a soldier's uh, uniform. When he had his uniform on, he's ready to go to battle, he had on the tie. That was part of his, uh, his fatigue, so to speak, I don't want to call it. And he got transferred and that, and that was where it was a little trigger. But, uh, it started back in that. For the, uh, no, that was the, uh, that was the veil. And we're going to miss out on quite a bit. Uh, here, uh, sorry about that, but we know that a lot of people in the world today, sometimes even the people in the church, they say things and do things that they shouldn't. And sometimes, uh, like you remember, Jesus told, was talking to Peter, and Peter said that, uh, I'm not going to let nothing happen to you. I'll be with you even to death. And uh, he wanted the Lord to go through what he's going to go through. And Peter, Jesus told Peter, he said, get behind me, Satan. <clears throat> you say with the things that be of man, not the things that be of God. And sometimes in the church today, uh, uh, a child of God can, can say something and not realize that that's not really them saying it, that they're being influenced and encouraged to say things that they shouldn't be saying. And they think they're doing the right thing and doing the wrong thing. So we have to be spiritual discretion. Uh, like the Word says, to try the spirits before we submit to them and make sure that they line up with what God is saying in His Word. If it doesn't line up with what God is saying in His Word, then it's not the Spirit of God, it's the Spirit of something else. So the more we know the Word, the more we know what is right and what is wrong, and not be influenced and encouraged by what is not not right and what is not right. Uh, not, not anyway, uh, uh, somebody like to close out the prayer this morning? Uh, okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing us here together, Lord. I thank you for what we were able to discuss in this lesson, Lord, and I pray that you would write it on our hearts so that we may uh, change what we need to change and be um, better so that we can expand your kingdom and do what we, what you want us to do, Lord. I ask you to uh, bless every family that's here, those that couldn't be here, and I also ask you to bless the worship team that's getting ready to start yes. as we come into your uh, presence once again, Lord, and I ask you to bless whoever's going to be speaking to us today, and I ask it in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.